Welcome to Rockcast. Dyson Production. You're literally one of the influences to be a better person in my life, you know? I figured if, if, if a man with OCD from the future can fucking maintain a reality based in movement progression, a forward moving progression, both physically and mentally, then I could get my shit together for a little while. And then the world ended. So I was like, oh, okay. Irony. It's good to have you on, man. I appreciate it. This is going to be real quick and painless. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Barton of Machine Corpse, also known as the Coat Hanger Militia. That's a, some, some people don't know that. Nice. Some people don't know that that was a coin toss right there, remember? Remember? Mm-hmm. You, wanted, you were like, I really like, I was like, ah. I should have gone with I wanted to use anything except for Machine Corpse. Anything I know. Was, a, was, was the name I wanted to use. I want to use that one. You know, and I, I, always, I always appreciate that because I know that was like, Machine Corpse was your baby. You know, you kind of gave it to everybody. All right. So, here's my questions for you, my man. The first, I got two of them. They're real simple. Uh, what is something that you look forward to doing after this pandemic goes away or we settle back into normal routines where we could be living our lives? What's something you wish you could do or, or you're really looking forward to doing? Well, that's actually pretty easy because really what I want to do is I would love to go and hang around with my friends and play some metal, jam. Really, that's kind of it. Just be around people. Again. Not that I really like to be around people. I know, it's weird. <laughs> I'm good I'm good being alone, but I do kind of require uh, there's people that I enjoy being around those and people that I talk to, <laughs> that I still hang around with and, and get together with. Yeah. Yeah, we think... We, you know, um... Well, I was just going to say, though, that it does, even loners, people like us that spend hours by ourselves, the end result is, the reward is that, like, hey, share this with everybody, and that energy shared and everything else, and then you crawl back into it. But the minute you're told that, well, now you can't, all of a sudden you're like, oh, man, I should have gone out more and done it. I I missed so many shows here because I was like, eh, it'll be back. I got jaded instantly. No, 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 no. I don't even know it wasn't a point. I was just rambling. I ramble, man, and, and I, I will just keep going, and I will say nothing, you know, but I'll talk a lot. <laughs> Are you making fun of me? Because you just described me. No. <laughs> Although I say a lot of no, funny no, stuff. I know. Okay. All right. So, yeah. No, that that is that is huge, too, man. I can't wait. And I think people are going to really enjoy going back out again. It's going to be a lot different. You know, everybody wants to get back to the way it was. I was like, can we not do that <laughs> ever? Yeah. You know? Ever. The way it was, one of the things that I would like to do is go is start traveling again. I love to travel, and I've been stuck in this house since April. I mean, I got out a few times, but I like traveling. I, I want to go out to Washington. I missed a couple of shows, and I was going to go see Dead Can Dance here this spring, uh, uh, this last spring, but of course that didn't happen. Yeah, a lot so of we'll shows see. got canceled. All right. So, man, so my next question, this one is... Uh, this is a more zen one that I think you'll appreciate a little bit. But is there anything during the pandemic, anything that you've taken, any insight, any uh, any positives that you've gathered from this? Like, or you know what I mean? Like any adaptations you see yourself making, any silver linings in the fact that the whole world just had to hit their fucking brakes and reevaluate everything? I think it's a good question. That's it. That is a, that's a really good question, um, and I imagine you're probably get a very different answer from every person that you. Oh ask my God! Them. Every answer has so been so beautiful. What, it, I, what I've come to realize is, you know, I, I guess being at home, you know, the idea is like, oh, I don't have to go to work. I get to work from home. Well, that's great. But what happens is you almost kind of get, especially when you don't get to go out and do social things and have all the other additives to your life that keep it interesting. Rather just being at home, it's easy to say, ah, oh, you know, I'll meditate tomorrow or I'll, you know, whatever. And so it's easy to lose track of those things that you think, you know, man, one of these days if I could be home every day, man, I would meditate every single day. I would be on top of this and on top of that, you know. But it's easy to almost get lethargic 
and to let those things slide a little bit. And, and of course, I notice in my own eye, because I can feel it, that when I'm off balance, and that's what keeps me balanced, is whenever I go and kind of center up um, through meditation. And um, so it's, it, it, it really meditating, it's not something that I have to do, it's something that I like to do, I love to do, because it's like, it's like going out to a good meal for your body, you know, something that's healthy and delicious all at the same time. It's kind of like that, but for like my whole being. And uh, it's not like I have to twist my arm to do it, but it's just funny because it, it takes willpower to maintain some type of a structure when there really is nothing requiring structure in your life. You're seeking balance when there's no counterbalance. Absolutely. Um, I know deep. in my own life that I've been... Um, if I don't have anything that I'm required to do, like go to work or this or that, that it can kind of, eventually you kind of lose self-value a little bit, and it can kind of be a contributor to, you know, depression or a lower vibe. And so, yeah, just being conscious of that and trying to remain proactive and just to say, you know what, maybe I don't feel like going to meditate right now, but I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah. And of course, I'm glad. It doesn't have to be an hour. It can be five minutes, really, just taking some time to get quiet. So off, and I think for me that's the biggest thing. It's not, it's just that little bit of self government. It doesn't take much of it. You don't have to do it in everything, even if you do it just in one thing. It, it makes such a big difference to your how you feel about yourself, and your mental health. Yeah. Absolutely. And, well, and a lot of people right now are feeling guilty because they're feeling that way and they're feeling weak and they're feeling depressed because of that. And what, what they need to do is accept that this isn't normal, that you're going to have to make some changes and you have every right to be depressed and down right now. But it's also in your your hands to to fucking t to take that. And it's exact. you're describing exactly like how my yoga and my breathing every day is like, uh, yeah, I could I could break out the mat and I could do that, or I could just play Borderlands 2 and smoke pot and get. But then your body, dude, your but God damn it, there's no way I'm gonna keep this under five minutes. Your body, your body loves it when you do it, and even when I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do it. My hips hurt. I got really tight hips. I've, it's one thing I work on the most is those hip stretches, which you know when you do those, you're in pain. But that pain feels so fucking good when you when you get into it. You know what I mean? That's a good answer, Chris, and I like that. That's beautiful. That's uh, you know what? I gotta say, this has been really beautiful and uplifting. God, I, I swear to God, my testosterone levels are dropping or something. Uh, then nobody's shutting up. Nobody's shutting up. Everybody's talking at once. All the you know those nature videos where all where like there's there's murderous chimpanzees coming through the forest and all the monkeys up there are like ah, ah, ah. that's everyone right now. Except nobody knows who the chimpanzees are or who the monkeys are. It's just fucking feces and fucking. Fuck. And I'm I'm 46 years old. I'm supposed to be dating people, dude. I don't want to get COVID and herpes. You know, that's just that's oh. terrible. It burns when I'm peeing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> fucking, it's a nightmare out there, man. It's a fucking nightmare. <clears throat> All right, Chris fucking Barton. I love you, dude, and you are my spiritual guide. You know, it's funny. My bartender is my my sponsor. Uh, and you, but I watched you. You're, you're, you've led only through, through, through inspirational, like doing it. You've done it. I've watched your journey from when I met you, and um, I'd like to think I made you ask some questions about reality. Like, but well, most of what I believe yeah. can't be possible if that guy exists, because that's that's the yeah, devil. You were, <laughs> you've been you've been a huge catalyst, man. I mean, I wouldn't be right here doing the things that I'm doing and having the experiences and having had the experiences I had if you weren't part of my life. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's. It was symbiotic. That's what I'm saying. But no, you really though, like you, your journey of everything, and it's it's just great. And my favorite thing about you, other than your OCD thing, which uh, I just I love that because it ties into so much your music and your perfection and and all of that makes that like people have always throughout the centuries been like this is a they say the people that have these issues are fucked up, and I think everybody's got a you know a thing. Yeah, but not dude. You're just you're you're an amazing human being, and it's a good answer. But you've you've got you've given me a lot of uh, self confidence to do shit, and I don't know. It's leading to example was the term I was doing. And you truly do walk the shit that you talk, you know, in a positive way. So it's cool. 
You've always been very inspirational. I hate that about you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, I, I could say the same about you. And nah. It's true. No, no, it really is. It really is. All right, Chris Barton, that was fucking awesome. All your answers are great. I love you, brother. You're a cool guy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that was an inspirational, though. That second answer was good. I was actually really excited to know that I was going to get to uh, ask you that question in particular. I don't know why I've got happy with Facebook. All right. Three, two, one. What's up, Brian Pushusta? Do I say that right? I feel like I say it wrong every time. Yeah, you're pretty good at it. Pretty Thanks good. You me Pers- again. Pershusta. Ryan Pershusta. You bring me vodka or I kill your family. The old country. Yes, in the old country. Vodka kills you. So, <laughs> Bushka. See, yeah, it did. I'm telling you, it's too close. It's too close. So, my sponsor, folks, for those of you who don't know, is this man right here. My ex bartender turned sponsor. That's like an ex serial killer turned preacher, I guess. He's also a reverend at the Church of, uh... The Holy Spirits. The Church of Holy Spirits. I mean, it's a better name than most of the religions got, honestly. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we got the full effect. Now I feel like I'm talking to my bartender. Make me, <laughs> make me a drink. Oh, like shelf in front. <clears throat> Man, I picked the wrong... Yeah, but I'm trying to get one of those motherfuckers. How do I, uh... Yeah, I picked the wrong year to quit drinking, my man. Anyways... Day 518. <laughs> Jesus Christ, encountering. All right, Ryan, this is real simple. I just got two questions for you, man. I'm trying to make people at least have a positive thought or something. I know it goes against my nature, but that's what I'm doing. So the first question is, man, is what is something you look forward to doing that you kind of maybe took for granted or didn't really appreciate uh, before this stupid shit happened? What's something you're looking forward to getting back to? You know, I really want to go to Baldwin's like this year. I was looking forward to like some water parks and shaving on that, but but that like just theme parks in general. Yeah, I've never been to one. Really? Well, I mean, I've been to the state fair in Alaska, but that doesn't count. And the only roller coaster I've ever been on was a little kid one that goes around. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, everybody's answers are, are cool and unique. I like that. You know, it's weird, but. You know, people really wanted to do and just kind of maybe didn't do it for a day or something or put it off. And then now you're like, fuck that. Next time I'm going every goddamn weekend. You know? That's just another thing. I had a lot of shows lined up like summer through fall and that kind of got fucked. Yeah. Um, well, we'll get back to it, man. Have faith. But- just, you know, we're America. We take a little longer to get our heads out of our asses than most people. Not to say that they're all fucking doing it right anywhere else. Pandemics. All right. Well, that's a good answer. The second one is, uh, have you taken anything positive in your time alone or through this quarantine shit? Have you learned any insights about yourself or decided any, you know, any changes you want to make or anything There's like a, that? A few. I've been working on, like, you know, eating better because I put on like 50 pounds with uh, the lockdown. So, trying to diet a little bit, but that's that's a tough battle. That's so, a battle, man, especially when you're still in the quarantine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, I was trying to drink less, and it's kind of a lot of drinking in there, and then a lot of drinking here and there. So. You still young, dude. I'm 45 before I quit, man, and I did a thousand ups and downs. As long as you still are like questioning yourself, you know, and being like, I should probably not do this as much. Then one day, you'll finally be like, fine, I guess I'm, I guess I agree. Or you'll die. Uh, I mean, dude, either way, it's a fun trip either way, you know what I mean? I would kill right now to take 10 shots of Jägermeister and shove a cat at my asshole. I would really do that. Especially if I took them right in a row. That cat wouldn't stand a chance with me. <laughs> No, that I've been, I've gotten a lot better at like managing money, considering I'm not getting like nearly as much as I was at the beginning or before getting COVID. Yeah. And, like got back to my little paycheck to paycheck pretty, pretty good. Well, I'm glad you got a paycheck again, man. I was getting worried about you there. He's getting all right. Are you still able to work right now? Uh, yeah, we are still open. We have like our patio and then it's mostly to go. 
Whatever, man. I'm still doing it. It's fun, you know. I like the people I work with now, so. That's good. That's good. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Allison and everyone else up there is pretty fun to hang out with, so. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty cool, cool, cool crew. Fitting yeah. Very nicely. Yeah, I'm hoping one day to get back the way it was, but see, that's something we just can't. It may never ever be the way it was, but the way it is and the way it could be, that's up to us, you know? Yep. Oh, something my you can't. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, see how easy that was? Painless, like always. Yeah. Well, I finally got you for one, and it's a timed interview, so maybe I can actually get you for a real one. Well, Coming up. I'm down. I miss you, brother. I really do. You know, I'd be a lot ballsier if I had an immune system that wasn't that of a 90-year-old dead person, so... But yeah. I gotta be a pussy. I'm not even going to Thanksgiving this year, so... Yeah. Stop it, motherfucker. All right, my dude. We'll take care of yourself. Have a good See you around. You're still technically my fucking, you know, graphic artist and shit, so... Yeah, I'm working on a few things. Um, you still gotta send me the details for that. Uh... <clears throat> I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet, but... But if I want to do it as a storyboard or what, I don't know. Yeah, I just I just send you the whole fucking joke and let you read it. Oh, uh, I should be getting out of, like, I don't have any of the, the software for it, but I might be able to start, like, animating. Yeah, we could do some cool shit. If you could animate, man, we could we could do some cool shit. I got, I got shit. I think, like, taking a little bit of, like, everyone's jokes and shit and, like, just kind of, like, like a shorties watching shorties thing from, like, yeah. back in the 2000s. Dude, it's a great, it's healthy for one to think that way because it may be the only form of entertainment. The whole paragraph may shift. We don't fucking know. But, you know, we've been slowly reaching into the fucking computer world anyways. So it's no big surprise, you know. We can make the transition. But, you know, human contact. It's a thing. Ryan Pashusta, you are a good friend and I love you long time. Soon we drink together again. My might. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I'm like thinking crazy shit. Like, you know, if this thing ends and we're all doing one of those big, giant, end of the war, pandemic fucking things, we're all bouncing around the streets and fucking, I might, I might swill a fifth of fucking Jaeger, dude. Just, to, you know. I'll drink with you. You, oh, you, like, you have a fucking choice. <laughs> all right. All right, Ryan. Keep in touch, yeah. motherfucker. We'll do, I want to do a real interview with you, though. We will. It'll be all about you. All right, later, my man. Right. Later. Perfect. Oh, I gotta hang up on you now. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. These are fun. Well, that was Ryan Pashusta. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad you're working again and serving those drinks to those people that need them. Hopefully safely and sanitarily. Should be my yeah. philosophy on that. All right, so this is real simple, dude. I just basically got a couple of cheesy-ass questions for you, literally two, and uh, that's it. Just trying to bring a little bit of cheer the only way I know how and give myself a whole fuck ton of work. So let's get this started right about now. Let's see, busting out a joint, good. I don't know if you noticed, I'm repping. I found my shirt. It had fallen in a crack behind my clothes, so oh, nice. it's too dirty to wear right now, but I figured... This will save me some uh, time. Blunt, those are actually really good. I got an Indica one, and uh, I expected it to be all choky and shit. And they're, and, well, that's, that was a quick minute. All right, man. Well, that was a good time. Thank you for coming yeah. on. All right, let's start this shit. So you're going to be uh, with Ryan Fashusta. Nice. Oh, you guys got lighters. Cool. And you're going to be with my uh, uh, Chris Barton. Uh, what do you smoke in there? Hashtag blunt. I rolled up a joint from Freddy Fuego's cake line that we finally got in. Some alpha buds. So, roll that up to talk to you for a minute. Um, I'm excited for your answers. You are a humanitarian. Also, so I could put all this shit in here and there and everything. He runs the podcast show. Uh, he runs Comedy and Kitsap, which is a comedy promotion. And it seems to be branching out to, to uh, the virtual world and live shows and trying to figure things out uh he's got merch i don't know if he's got any for sale sure but or for sell still but you can uh hit him up uh, you know i'll have all of his info and everything on here lots and lots of stuff to watch you could go back this dude's been doing this for seven or eight years probably eight now because i've known you for over a year 
Because I remember when I first met you, I was like, what do you mean you've been doing this for seven years? I thought this was like your first week. God, the world doesn't revolve around me, man. Every It's a realization I go through so many times. Look at that. You didn't even cough. I mean, the idea of a blunt, man, is you're choking down all that tobacco. Oh, you look so pimpy. Yeah, there's no tobacco in here. Yeah, and I love that. That's why if I buy uh, wraps, I buy the T ones. So, all right. So that's Joe. Uh, let's get to it. My first question, man. And uh, I've been surprised by the answers. Some really touching ones, but never what I expect. Um, what is something you look forward to doing after the pandemic? When we get to that, not all clear, you know, but when we get to that point where society grinds forward again, something maybe you, you kind of put off or something that you just see yourself going 100% into all you, buddy. Uh, I just can't wait to get back to doing comedy shows, producing and performing. I mean, the reason why I was so drawn to doing comedy was because I wanted to help put a positive energy into the world, you know, make people laugh, get people together, be social, to be uh, having a good time with one another and just leave that day feeling like no matter what problems you have in your life at least that day was a good day because you got to go out and have a good laugh so i think when things get back to normal i'm eager to jump back on that and keep doing that again because it's been nine months now and i haven't been able to do that and i think more now than ever people need that shit. they want to get out they want to see music they want to see comedy and that needs to be fed and I feel obligated to provide that when and if I can at all costs. Yes, hold on a second. That's great. And working, I have a job now where I work four days out of the week and I've never been able to have a job that was steady and do comedy at the same time. And a job. I'm looking forward to that. A good job. Not a fucking yeah. life draining soul experience. As a matter of fact, a job that really does benefit um, comedy in itself and creativity and bringing joy yeah. to people. Fuck, you know, I didn't even I mean, think of these benefits. Selling weed and doing comedy, I mean, wake me up. I'm dreaming. <laughs> it's like half baked uh, if Dave Chappelle was a real character who actually chiefed down a lot. <laughs> That's a good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer, man. That's a good answer. So, and with the job, it's going to allow me to make risks <laughs> and putting together bigger shows and getting more talent out. Maybe getting some TV talent out. You know, yeah. uh, I, I know the local comedians are eager to get out there again. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. I've been uh, playing a soundtrack for each of the people well basically just sound you know if it's a band member or a musician of course i could play that so i might actually insert a small like two minute Rogers. bit from your uh, car show hey, everybody. hey give it up for allison everybody yay yay i'm yeah check check hello all right that's a little loud yeah yeah a little loud okay check check all right thank you allison i'm gonna say in my car because it's way warmer in here you guys are crazy for being out there right now so uh, I don't think any comedian's done this yet, but you guys have braved the elements and you've come out here and support comedy and Billy's show. So everybody give it up for yourselves for coming out here and bearing this weather. You guys are coming out strong. This is fucking awesome. And let's give it up for Billy, the producer of the show, everybody. Give it up for fucking Billy, everybody. Great fucking dude, bro. Yeah, this is nice. It's nice and warm in my car, so I appreciate you guys. Also, I'm, I'm low-key just doing this so I don't have to put a condom on my microphone, so. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody, am I the only one that thought speed dating was a coke party? <laughs> Seriously man, I showed up to this thing with six different kinds of speed, I was ready to go. I was like, oh this isn't a coke party? Let me go back to my car and smoke a blunt. So, um, also, I want to tell you right now, a uh, little life advice. If you're having a hard time in your relationship or marriage, don't ever think that going to a swinger party is going to fix anything. <laughs> My wife proposed that one time and I was like, sure, let's, what could it hurt? Let me tell you this right now, first of all, people. 
It is not a good thing being the best looking couple at a swinger party. Okay? We didn't want anything to do with them, and they wanted everything to do with us. So I was like, oh, fuck, this isn't fair. But she was down, because she was a whore. She's like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you, why aren't you gonna commit to this? I was like, I wouldn't fuck any of these people, even if I was rolling on 10 ecstasies right now. That's how ugly these people are. This one chick looked like she was in a fucking diabetes commercial. I was like, oh shit. She lost her leg? Damn, bro. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I saw that one chick working at Jack in the Box on Kids Hot Boys, so. Yeah. I'm not fucking anybody in this one, you're probably, bro. Uh, so my girlfriend hates it when I call her bro. So now I call her Britch. She said she didn't like that either, so then I called her a brunt. So fuck you. So then I called her a broad. I went old school. I was like, what's up, broad? I guess that's the worst one of them all. I don't know. Never tell your partner to relax. They hate that shit. Never, especially when they're on their period. Moving on. Moving on. Something, if anything positive, any insights you gain from these nine months of hell, from this birthing of misery. Ooh, let me write that down. Uh, I mean, as far as positives go, I think just feeling incredibly lucky to have what I have when I have it uh, with my family and my children, the age that they're at, my, uh, my beautiful soul partner where I'm at and being able to have these things. If this COVID thing would have happened 10, 15 years ago in the situation I was in, I, I don't think I would have been able to adapt the way that I have. Being home alone more with the family and feeling incredibly lucky that we all love each other as much as we do and we get along with each other. It's just, it's, uh, I'm blessed in that department for sure. So that's what a positive. Too. Makes me happy. Uh, how old are your kids? Uh, 18, 19, and 13. See, that's perfect. I mean, yeah, some people are stuck at home with infants and toddlers. And so you're actually right there in that perfect cusp. Two of them want to get out and one of them's, you know, still a baby yeah. boy. Yeah, and my job is essential. So I'm able to still support my family. And uh, We're lucky there, bro. Very lucky. <laughs> I mean, I don't, that's why, I mean, I, it's sometimes when I, you know, you get mad at people that are freaking out out there and then it, it's kind of like, well, I do have a job. Really? I'm just looking at the speed at which I'm doing things now. And I can't wait for you personally to get to that same level where these projects that are taking you days will only then start taking you hours and you'll still get the same amount of product done. Yeah, man, family and, and, and shit that makes you happy. And, and we're fortunate dudes because I met you, all your comedy was about being unemployed and being a pot dealer, and then you got a job being a, uh, a bud tender. So that's it's amazing. Yeah. There's a difference between a pot dealer and a bud tender, goddammit. We wear, <laughs> we wear flair, motherfuckers. A lot of families so, delivering their own family members' uh, food. My sister's taking yeah. everybody. Uh, yeah, maybe, I think there's a lot more people looking out for each other now. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, silver linings, dude. As horrible as this all is, as long as we all live, you know, I mean, science is going to take us forward with trial and error. I wish people would understand that's part of the process. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, <clears throat> that was pretty much it. You got anything coming up other than uh, probably more uh, Mr. Poop articles? Uh, you know, I'm just still working on getting the right spot for the studio to live stream on a regular basis. So uh, yeah. I'd say just follow Comedy and Kids Have and the podcast show online. No. All right, man. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll, I'll probably throw up some links or I'll get lazy. I don't know. Yeah. No, you're still token on that fucker. I smoked mine. It was only a half gram, though. It's been my entire preference. All right, podcast show, comedy and kids app. Really good brother of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Rogers. Thanks for playing, buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. Good seeing you. Right. All right, man. Yeah, fuck yeah, bro. Joe Rogers, motherfuckers. Thanks for doing us. I'll talk to you later. Peace. Bye. All right. 
and cut, motherfuckers. Oh, fuck, I hang up this thing. Later, Joe. Later. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is Penny Dyer, Dyer, Dyer Simple Production. The Olympic Division's on the phone. Stay insane. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. Listen to the metal. I don't know. I mean, what? I got one camera hooked up. You got your drum I'm... kit behind you. What the fuck? No, I've got a GoPro hooked up over here. Is it coming through the <laughs> What camera is that? <laughs> Somebody's got a camera hiding in here, dude. <laughs> dude, you're being <laughs> spied on, bro. All right, I'm going to have to play, like, hot or cold. This is freaking weird. Colder? Colder. It doesn't see me though. I see you. You're walking right towards it. Is it your laptop computer? No, but I'm talking the one on the right side. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna point and start walking. Yeah, you're right pointing right to towards me. me. You're pointing right at me. Walk forward. Nope, now you're going off. Nope, right? Yep, it's right there. Whatever it's that is. It has, it's what, it's a camera with one lens. How is it doing this? How is it doing that? I don't know, it's okay, because what I'm going to do For COVID is, happening, because your hopes and dreams were almost achieved. Almost yeah. achieved. Almost achieved. You're still there, man. You like, my, you like my boom mic setup? It's a good setup. I like your little shed studio thing you got going on. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, I guess. You know, if you, if you don't think about the fact that you live in a shed, and that you just pretend that it's more of a studio that you happen to have a brand new badass bed on. Uh, then, um, you know, yeah, it's not as crippling, depressing as you think. What'd you say? You got a dirty smile on your face. What'd you say? I missed it. I said, I said don't go to jail with those tight hips, yours. <laughs> those, uh, those are some baby making hips, buddy. Don't you fucking know. Those are some baby. I ain't going to jail. Fuck that. Can you sit forward a little bit? I think you might be out of frame a bit. There we go. Yeah, oh. back. yeah get your side, side lean on that side. Yeah, I just noticed that. I'm sorry. No. Oh, I try not to interrupt. It's teaching me not because I'm giving, you know, it's like it's about you. Yeah, it's a new, it's hard for me. It's a, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, shut up. <laughs> Fuck you. All right.